All right, moving into waypoint section of DJI pilot mission planning. Cover an introduction of this feature set within this video. So when we're talking about waypoints, you see the dictionary definition would be a stopping place on a journey. And that's actually a pretty good way to describe it in the way we use it with the drone. So you can think of our mission flight, our automated flight, as the drone's journey. And the stops are going to be the waypoints that we create, which have a specific GPS location and height. And then at these specific stops, the drone has the ability to pause and complete actions such as taking a photo, starting a video, adjusting the gimbal pitch. And then you can also add waypoints for the avoidance of obstacles. Because when we're doing an automated mission here, the drone's just going to be taking the quickest route between waypoints. It's gonna go straight line. So if we have points on either side of a building, we also need to add a third waypoint on the side of the building for the drone to make a triangle per se and go around. You could add even more waypoints uh, to make it a you know, shorter loop there but ultimately just realize the drone will be going from waypoint to waypoint. And even if you don't necessarily add an action at the waypoint, such as taking a photo, it's important to plan the route correctly and avoid obstacles. Some applications for waypoints, the first one being repeated missions in inspection, security, construction. All of these would potentially require the drone to be flying to the same location and taking the same photo or video. So for example, transmission construction here, you need to document progress on a weekly basis and take photos at specific waypoints. We're able to repeat that in a much more efficient fashion and then get higher quality data by utilizing waypoints. Secondly, if we want to pre-plan a mission and we want the drone going to a specific point and we want it to be at specific height, it's a lot easier to pre-program a waypoint and have the drone fly to that specific point instead of trying to manually move the drone left, right, up and down to get that GPS location just right. Also a bit more on the advanced side, using photogrammetry and DJI Terra can create a 3D model and then plan a waypoint mission based on the 3D model and what the drone's camera view would see at the specific location. Very cool. We'll be getting into that per se today, but this is kind of talking about the building blocks of waypoint mission flight uh, where you could build on to kind of doing that more advanced application later on. So getting into waypoint mission flight here, just on the home screen of a pilot, just like when you're doing mapping before, click on the mission flight section. Remember that's Android only, smart controllers, Crystal Sky, Android devices. And then we have two options here. We can create a route or import a KML. If we're going to be doing a KML import, as you saw in the previous screen, we could create that on Google Earth, you would create it as one single line to import it as a waypoint flight, or you can go ahead and create it here on the controller. So we'd go create a route, waypoint, and then we have two options here, set waypoints or live mission recording. First off, we'll be going into set waypoints here, and that would be pre-planning using our mobile device. So when you open up our view initially here, you can see we still have the ability to minimize or maximize the side panel with the arrow button there. And then the actual mapping mission interface is very similar. Tap, hold, and drag to move the map's location. Use two fingers to zoom in and out. And then we also don't necessarily need to be connected to the drone to plan the mission here. We're able to specify the aircraft type. And then later on, only when we're executing our waypoint mission, would we be uploading the mission from the pilot app to the drone? On our map here, a single tap will go ahead and add a waypoint. 
and then we can add sufficient waypoints. You can see S stands for start, so that would be the starting waypoint, and it counts up. The buttons on the top there, the X within the circle would be to delete a waypoint. You can see the waypoint we have selected right now is waypoint three because it's filled in with blue. So if we hit that X, goodbye number three. Adding back three and four here, we can tap the trash can if we'd want to delete all the waypoints and start our planning again. And then we can tap the S with the arrows and the E to reverse the order of the waypoints. So instead of starting on the left side and going to number four, if we hit the button, it would then start on the right side and go to number four on the left side. The pin button would allow us to place a point of interest that can be used as a reference point for the camera to face at certain waypoints or even while it's going in between waypoints. It's going to be placed by default in the middle of the screen here. So you can see this is the exact middle of the mobile device there. So if you knew where you wanted to place the pin, you could just move the device so that, that the location is in the center or can tap, hold, and drag on the pin in the map to move it. Some situations where you might want to use POI, maybe there's a specific transmission tower there, maybe there's the, that's the construction site, and we always want the camera to be facing that point of interest. Here, as we have the home button selected on our sub menu, we can go ahead and name the waypoint flight mission. We can select an aircraft, we're just selecting other here today, working with the Mavic 2 Enterprise. And then going into the route settings. First option here, we have speed and height. And this is going to be for the entire waypoint mission. We can make more granular adjustments to specific waypoints later on. But right now we're saying, hey, 11.2 miles an hour and 164 feet relative to our takeoff point. Aircraft yaw refers to the drone's yaw along the route. And when we do select along the route, that just means the drone is going to be facing along the route the entire time. So you can see right here, as the drone goes down the line here, the front of the drone is facing the route itself. And so is our camera in this case. Next option would be manual. So you could just control that. If we're in mode two, it would be your left stick left and right. Uh, to control the drone's yaw as it flies around there. So don't have to have a preset yaw. For each waypoint, we can define yaw at each individual waypoint. And then center to POI, as we talked about before, if we want the drone facing a certain point of interest during the waypoint mission, or maybe we can even do this later on. If you know, we pre-planned our mission and then, hey, I'll add the POI in and we want the drone to face that. Gimbal control, once again, have the option for it to be manual. So we could use our gimbal wheel and adjust that during flight. Or for each waypoint, we can set our gimbal control beforehand so you don't have to worry about adjusting it during the flight. Once again, both could be useful depending on the situation. And then finally, upon completion, just like with our mapping missions, after the flight is done, we can go ahead and return to home. The drone can hover, the drone can land, or go to the route's starting point. And realize we can pause and stop the mission beforehand just using the on-screen prompts. Uh, when we execute a waypoint flight, we can also toggle the flight mode switch on the controller between tripod positioning and sport mode would usually be your three options, maybe Addy mode. But if you just toggled it between, for example, sport and then back to positioning, that would also take the drone out of waypoint mission mode that it was executing and you could manually control the drone to land. But most of the case we want to execute the entire waypoint mission and I would say the default usually is return to home after the mission has been completed. In our third sub menu here, we get down to the more granular section that we talked about, the specific waypoints. First ones being speed, height, and aircraft yaw. And you can see what we're adjusting 
based on what's highlighted in blue, and then also the label on the top there. We can toggle between different waypoints. You can see we can't go left anymore here because we're already at the beginning. But if we hit the button here, we'd go to waypoint two, and we can see waypoint one is currently selected. Have our speed here, and you can see that we aren't able to adjust that right now because the follow route is checked. So that's just saying, hey, whatever we did in our route settings, go ahead and use that for this waypoint. If we did want to adjust our speed though, we could uncheck follow route, and then the speed is going to affect the drone between waypoint one as it's going to waypoint two. So we could increase that, hey, just in this section, we wanna be going 20 miles an hour, and you can leave the other sections at 11.2 miles an hour. And then for height here, once again, you'd have to uncheck the follow route to adjust the height at the specified waypoint. Moving down here to aircraft yaw, that rotation is going to depend on what aircraft yaw was set as in the route settings. So if we change aircraft yaw to for each waypoint, these settings are going to be adjustable. If we leave it as manual, we're not going to be able to adjust these settings. So say we go back, we change that to for each waypoint, you can see that these settings are now adjustable. Aircraft yaw is set in degrees and it's relative to the course route. So if the drone, as we were talking about four was set to follow the route, the aircraft yaw would be zero degrees. And then aircraft rotation refers to which way the drone will yaw, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Another note here is the drone is going to yaw in between waypoints. So when it revives, arrives at a second waypoint, its yaw is what was set at that waypoint. And that's a bit of a mind bender there. So I think it's easiest to just show a quick example. So if we set waypoint three yaw to zero degrees and waypoint four yaw to 90 degrees, halfway between those points, the aircraft yaw is gonna be 45 degrees. So say we're starting here, it's rotating clockwise. So you can see it's now at 45 degrees. And if we set waypoint four yaw at 90 degrees, you can see it is at 90 degrees clockwise from the route. Gimbal pitch will change gradually between the waypoints as well, kind of like aircraft yaw. So if we, once again, back to our example here, set it as 90 and it was at zero, halfway through, gimbal pitch is gonna be at 45 degrees. And then actions is where we can add specific items for the drone to complete at the waypoint before moving on. So we have options here such as taking a photo, starting a recording, stopping a recording, gimbal pitch rotation, and all these are going to be taking place at the specific waypoint instead of in between the waypoints because it's an action dedicated just to that specific waypoint. We can even do aircraft actions as well, such as the aircraft rotating as we were just showing in between waypoints. So a little example here, maybe we want the drone to take a photo, pitch down to 34 degrees and then take another photo. You can tap and drag on the three bars to reorder your actions and then can swipe left on an action if you want to delete. You can also make finite adjustments to a waypoint selected by editing the lat and long manually, just those numbers, or using the arrow keys. So if you wanted to move up, down, left, right, those would all be options there with the specific waypoints. And then ultimately, after our planning was done, we could go ahead and hit the play button to execute the mission. It would upload the flight route from the mobile device through the remote controller connecting to the drone. If you're with a smart controller, kind of mobile device built into the remote controller, but would upload our flight route to the drone. And then the drone is going to be autonomously executing that uh, just as we saw with our mission mapping flight before. The other option here we saw was live mission recording. 
and that would be recording the waypoints and actions from an actual flight instead of pre-planning. So this could come into play if A, you find it easier to just fly the drone instead of manually creating waypoints and heights for specific locations. Or if we go back to our transmission construction line example there, if you're already completing the mission the first time manually, you can go ahead and basically log the locations of the drone and where we're taking photos uh, without really doing much extra work and then have that documented uh, to use the next time. So how this works is when we click on live mission recording here, you can see our map and we can click on the camera view in the bottom left. And then flying per normal, uh, we can click C1 here on the screen or that would be the C1 button on the back left of your controller and you'll see it adds a waypoint. So as we talked about before, if you're flying to the first waypoint and you don't want the drone uh, to just go up and go to the first waypoint, uh, quick side note there, if our first waypoint is at 90 feet, the drone is gonna go up to 90 feet and then fly to that waypoint at 90 feet. Uh, but for example, we talked about we have a building in the way of our takeoff point and our first waypoint, we wanna make sure we add waypoints going around the building as we go to our first waypoint. So that was just a waypoint action there. What's nice here though is if we are taking a photo, it will add the waypoint and the action at the, the waypoint to take the same photo. So you can see when we click on the photo button, we now have two waypoints and a photo as that second waypoint includes a photo action. When you're done, you can see here we have four waypoints and at waypoint two and four, there's a photo action. So you can go in and edit that waypoint mission and make granular adjustments like we showed before with the waypoint planning, or can just go ahead and execute the mission again using the play button later on. So that covers things for waypoints overall. Hopefully that gives you a good general understanding of how that works within the pilot application.